Anyways, Barrel or Nah, this is coming off of Britt Merrick's controversial maneuver of flashing his lights at the slow driver in the slow lane, pulling around them, possibly flipping them off when he drives by them, and then cutting them off and potentially slamming on the brakes in front of them. All things that you and I totally co-sign and approve of, but this barrel or not is adjusting your driving policy if your family is in the car. Ooh. So um, would you still do that? Would you still honk at somebody? Would you still flip somebody off if your wife is in the car and or your kid's in the car? I'm going to say it's no barrel to adjust because rage driving is best as a pure emotion. It is an uncontainable emotion. If you're rage driving as theater, no, 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 no. Like, and so with family in the car, without family in the car, with grandparents in the car, without grandparents in the car, with anyone in the car, you drive the same. And if you get enraged, also, I feel that rage driving is not just about you or me. Rage driving is about teaching a lesson to somebody else and making the world a better place. Agreed. This is this is an important duty. It is important to let that slow driver know, not here, not on my watch. And if you stop teaching lessons when your children are in the car, A, they don't get to learn that lesson. Mm. B, there's one person out there on the road who's clogging up, gumming up the works even further, thinking that it's okay. This is a societal duty. Yes. Like, so, it's, not, it's not for us. All right, cool. Because I have adjusted my driving style. Bring it back. Uh, but I'm I'm going to qualify by saying I'm not a rage driver, but I drive with purpose. And that purpose is to get to where I'm going. And it seems to be there's people who are just don't give a crap and they're going too slow. They're not, you know, they're sitting at a right hand turn, not going, waiting for the light to turn green or whatever it is. And so I'm not rage filled, but I am going to honk the horn to let them know exactly what you're saying, to keep it moving for the greater good and for the flow of traffic. But after the Britt Merrick talk, I was driving with my wife in the car and somebody did something and I honked at him and she snapped back like, why do you have to honk at people? Why do you have to do that? And it's like, I told her exactly what you said. And I'm like, because people need to it's know. my obligation to our society and our civilization yep. to correct and right the wrong. I'm not trying to beat the person up. You know, I'm not going to do anything to them, but I'm honking them the signal to You're let wrong. them know that they did something wrong, hoping that they will feel shame for the thing that they did wrong. And change and their behavior. Exactly. There's a plague that has descended upon Southern California uh, that I don't know how to fix. Uh, and I would love feed listener feedback on this one, which is now buses in the carpool lane drive me crazy. Yes. Drive, this has just started to happen within the last, I feel, few years. You never saw a bus in a carpool lane, right? And I fully get it. If traffic is jammed and the carpool lane is moving or whatever, it's not going to be moving that quickly. So bus, get in the carpool lane, whatever, right? You obviously have a lot of people. Yesterday, I had to drive up to LA. Uh, traffic was, it was right at that time when traffic starts to gum, but it's still moving like traffic in the main lanes was moving bus speed, right? Traffic in the main lanes was going 55, 65, whatever. Carpool lane could have been going 80, except the bus was there going just as fast as everybody else and actually making traffic. Like, and people trying to, like, it drives me crazy, bus driver. What do you think you're doing? You're literally making traffic. Crazy. The, the thing of it is, if you were able to get in the helicopter and go look over the traffic, it looks like uh, an ant hill, you know, where you can, like ants have a very orderly way of doing things and they all abide by the societal rules. And if somebody gums it up, it's very clear. And that's what you would see on the, on uh, from that helicopter view is for whatever reason, the bus doesn't realize it. But if you could pull back a little bit, you would see there's a way to do this. And it's there's an orderly way to do this that would allow for everybody to get where they're going in a timely fashion. But if you step out of line, you ruin the entire order. For everyone. For which, everybody. Which, and I, I think it's that people not necessarily, they don't know. It's the problem is they don't care. The bus driver does not care, right? He's like, oh, I got people going to the carpool. Boop. Like he doesn't think... 
okay, wait a second. There's more people here than in this world than are on my bus. So I see traffic over here going exactly as fast as I would drive otherwise. I see that people in the carpool lane will go a lot faster. I can look yeah. in my rear view mirror and see the stack of cars behind me is 30 deep. I can look out my front window and see nothing but space ahead of me. Yeah. Ooh, maybe, you know, it's just people don't care. People have stopped caring, which don't care anywhere else except the road. Care on the road. They stopped caring about everybody else, but they care more about themselves than they ever have before. It's a real curse. Yeah, that's where we're at right now. Well, uh, all right. I'm all worked up now. Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> Back to surfing. Uh, barrel or not, coming from a listener, asking people in the water for the time. Watch sponsors aside, not wearing a watch, surfing, but instead asking everyone around you in the lineup uh, what time it is. My watch recently broke and I have left very free or I have felt very free while surfing without worrying about the time until that moment that I panic thinking, oh shoot, maybe I have to pick up my kid from school right now. So barrel or not, asking other surfers for the time. Absolutely no barrel. You've talked about this, of course, giving the great advice. I think it was even a tool to live by of if somebody asks, then you add 10 minutes or 15 minutes or whatever to get them out of the water quicker. That's great. Uh, but on the principle of it, um, the lineup should be a time-free space for everyone, right? If you choose to wear your verewatches.com, which I do, I wear my Vare watch when I surf because I like to look at the time. I like to see how long I've been out, but I don't want it broadcast, right? I don't want, time should not exist in the lineup uh, for everyone. If you want it to exist for yourself, that's fine. But anytime somebody says, what time is it to somebody else? Everyone now knows the time, which is unfortunate. This violates rule number one, which is don't talk in the water. Yes. That's it's it. So true. It you is know so what I mean? True. Just like, I don't know you. I don't need to know you. Don't make small talk. Don't ask me for the time. Mind your own business. It's That's it. It is really, really true. Water talk is naughty talk. Exactly. So rule number one already violated. Go get your watch broke. Go to veyerwatches.com slash surf splendor. Save yourself 15%. Um, okay. <laughs> Coming back to this topic again. Barrel or not, giving your kid a nickname. Coming off of your nicknaming JJF's kid, it makes me wonder. You've correctly acknowledged in the past that the best nicknames are the ones friends give to one another in high school or college. But as a parent, we have an opportunity to game the system. Can we prefab a nickname? Or would you be doing your child a disservice by sending them into the prim primordial social soup with a prefabbed nickname? Barrel or not, nicknaming your kids. No barrel, unless it's a natural nickname. Charles to Charlie, you know, whatever. It's not really a nickname though anymore. Exactly. But like if you're shortening their existing name, if you're trying to be funky, that thing reeks artificial and the reek of artificiality will stick around your kid. Again, I think I brought this up. I cannot say the kid's name, unfortunately, because in case their parents yeah. are listening, but parents named kid nicknamey nifty middle name uh normal first name they call kid by nifty nicknamey middle name and it's just fake it's all fake right every time i see that little kid i think you're a fraud you little fraud you're a walking <laughs> lie man and everyone else sees it too you're going nowhere in life because the people smell your fake stink so that's what happens i like the idea here of like gaming the system but Nobody sees their kid the way that society sees their kid. And so you are going to give them some polished version of a nickname that you are trying, that you are then hoping sticks and that the rest of society will buy into. I agree with Chaz. It's going to feel fraudulent. Everybody's going to identify it as fraudulent. That's going to stick with your kid is the fraud tag. So you have to let the cards fall where they may. You, you totally have to do. let friends come up with a nickname. I mean, it's not that you even have to, it's just what is going to happen. So you might as well accept it. And not everyone has a nickname, right? Like the, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't have a nickname. Like, yeah. like nobody ever calls me slick or Ch Slim. Chaz, Chaz is a nickname by the way. I mean, and I'll tell you what, 
guess who's a fraud? I gave myself that nickname fraudulently. <laughs> it's I just wanted to write as Chaz for some reason. And so I started writing as Chaz. Who knows why? Probably made up lies in my head. I mean, my dad used to call me Chaz, but it wasn't enough to actually, he, like he would call me Chaz from time to time. So you want to be like me? You want to be a fraud? You want to be just reeking of artificiality? Name your kid Chaz. Yep. You can't do it. Can't. So my dad, now that you mention it, uh, my dad used to call me Buzzy. I, I think it's because I had like a buzz cut for a period of time. And so he called me that, but only up to a certain age, you know, not post puberty, certainly. So maybe up until 10 or 12 or something if, like that. But if somebody would have heard your dad call you Buzzy, if one of your buddies and thought Buzzy, and then people would have started calling you Buzzy from that, that would have worked. That's how nicknames come from, I feel, proper ones, right? And you would be Buzzy Scales. And that would be you. And that would not reek of falseness because that right. was a genuine, like th your dad didn't prefab that nickname. He didn't sit up before you were born and think, you know what a cool nickname is, is Buzzy. So right. I'm going to name my son, David Lee Scales, and I'm going to call him Buzzy because right. I like, and he's going to be known as Buzzy to others. That's where you get the fraud. Yeah. It has to come from the kid's personality and actions and maybe a parent's rodent appearance or whatever it is. And then they get a nickname based off that, but there's no way that you can prefabricate it. You can't, you can't um, make it. Which makes me wonder, is Buzzy Kerbox his real name? There's no way that his name is Buzzy. It's a possibility. Somebody could no. name their kid Buzzy. I bet it's Vincent Ronald Kerbox. And he had a <laughs> buzz cut. <laughs> I saw a meme this week that was like, is there any other human on the planet named Sigourney or only her? Oh, that's a good one. That is a good one. It's got to be. I, I feels it feels Scottish to me. It feels bet... like a real name, except there's only one person on the planet whose name. Like it doesn't feel like a made up name, you know. Is, is Scotland filled with Sigourneys? Could be. I mean, if you're going to have to identify any country that might be, yeah, Scotland would be right there. Wales, yeah. maybe. Yeah, but yeah. Scotland's a great call. Ooh, speaking well, of back to surf ads, uh, I got it. What's uh, what's her name? In uh, I totally said literature, but um, uh, what's her name in Succession? What's uh, redhead character's name? Oh shoot! Uh, it's a good name. It's a great name that's pronounced entirely different than it's spelled. There's a comedian who does a whole bit on. <laughs> saying that name and then spit like trying to explain how the name is spelt to somebody else and it's very very funny okay, uh, me, i'm looking it up as we're yeah, speaking this is... uh gosh shiv shiv siobhan siobhan spelled s-i-o-b-a-n shiboahan shiboahan <laughs> yeah siobhan shiv is the nickname there you go surf ads done and dusted shiv. just just don't wreck it we said like, we weren't going to give you any specific recommendations, but we're throwing out Shiv and Sigourney for your yep. consideration. You've got two right there. Two bangers. Really Siobhan, ones. and I bet Surf Ads being Australian, I think that he is, probably does have some Gaelic in him. I think almost all Australians do. And so you have a, all you need is a dash of some ethnicity or culture or whatever in order to use that name, right? I'm sure there's enough Gaelic in you surf ads to use Siobhan or Sigourney. If it is in fact Scottish. Shiv is really good, dude. It's a great name. It Shiv looks cool. Is good. It, it looks, looks cool. cool. Sounds bad. Cool. All of it. Yeah. yeah. I Siobhan. might have to edit this whole portion out just to keep <laughs> that name on ice for me to potentially use if, if we ever have a daughter. I, exactly. And it's, it also, it's not like nobody would think you were being trendy. Nobody would think like Siobhan's a real name. Nobody would think that you based it off of the show Succession. They yeah. would, yeah. The bang. Or spell it like you said, and then call her Shabohan. Yes. <laughs> That'd be fine too. People read it and they're like, hey, Siobhan, I like that name. No, it's Shabohan. Okay, <laughs> get it right. Shib for short.